Head on over to Anime Express for exclusive anime merch and use code DAFFY10 at checkout for 10% off your next purchase. Thank you to Anime Express for sponsoring this video. Yo! Yes, everybody, we are back with some more Kaguna! Butchy content, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for my absence last week. Your boy is on some vacation. It was a good time. I was in Vegas. I was with my girlfriend, my homeboy, my girlfriend's friend. We had a great time. Lovely, lovely, lovely trip. But back to the grind, back to the grindstone. So, in the last chapter of Kagurabachi, we had your boy Hirohiko spilling the beans. Yeah, that boy Hirohiko was telling everybody business up in Hishaku, telling our boy Chihiro everything he needed to know. And unfortunately, our boy Hatchaku. I don't know what y'all call him, but uh, the Hishaku guy with the hat with the Hishaku tattoo on his other hand actually showed up and apparently is going to jump Samura. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie, my boy. It ain't looking good for him, it ain't looking good. We'll see though, we'll see though. Oh, oh no, I ain't too, uh, <laughs> his eyes ain't looking too good, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. But so far, I am genuinely enjoying the Sword Bear assassination arc in Kagurabachi. This is obviously going to be in the second season of it when it gets an anime. But very very curious to see how long it's going to be because it already feels long enough as it is probably because we're all just you know reading this weekly but i i could definitely see this arc going another 20 to 30 chapters considering the fact that we haven't even met the two other sword bearers so we will see but uh, before we get too deep into the video please make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe we are on our way to 50,000 subscribers and i would love to have you around you seem like a good person you seem like you give good hugs and you seem like you smell nice so you gotta be in my audience because we got some niggas in here to stink all right that's the video so we start off this chapter we have our boy hakuri recovering from his spirit energy exhaustion which apparently we get some lore that spirit energy exhaustion the time to recover for that is 30 minutes minimum and this is top of the line care as well so there's no if ands or buts about it and it's only been 10 minutes so there's a possibility that if he were to use his abilities even further or you uh, try to access the storehouse or anything like that he can incur serious brain damage or even possibly a coma so curry relays the info to the other members of the kamunabi and says that shiro says that all the forces are gathering on the temple to attempt to jump samura and the two kamunabi guards say that they're going to join him in battle whether he likes it or not now it was stated before that it's very dangerous to aid samura in battle because of friendly fire obviously he can't can't see. Well, no fucking shit. Which actually, I don't necessarily know if I've seen in media the prospect of somebody fighting that's blind. You actually cannot fight beside them because typically they have something that allows them to aid them against friendly fire, such as smell or and things like that. But what we see later on what's going to happen. It's very hard to actually instance of friendly fire does occur. Now, obviously not to a lethal amount, but we'll see. And so we have the uh, this statement that the Makizumi are a special force dedicated to Mr. Samura. <laughs> a special force, man. This will be what the third or fourth special forces unit that we see in this series. Dude, I hope they're not going to be jobber status, man. They they, they look so cool. There's the anti-cloud gouger squad. Then it was the anti-intent special forces. Then it was the dudes that are decided to protect Udaha. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. We'll see. So two Kabanabi guards go and wake up this kid that's laying down inside of the temple. And the kid says, just a little more. I need my rest. I'm a glowing boy. And the woman says, physically anyway, get up. Your master's in danger. Do you want to die? And the kid actually takes out some candy cigarettes and says i'm gonna need to get fired up here so he's a big samura fanboy just like everybody else i mean samura's really fucking cool i don't know why you would be now do i think this is samura's biological kid i i doubt it she said your master not your father or anything so obviously he's not too pressed about his physical well-being here but i mean samura jr <laughs> is just it's cool i guess samura i mean they're playing real hard into the whole batman theme man i mean samura has a robin so that's that's cool so we go back to the battle with samura and the hishaku with the hat attempts to throw up his senses with some explosions and smoke mess up his sense of smell mess with his ears but samura is still adept at defending himself as the enemy notes when he says even when we distract his senses he still picks up on hostile energy now the biggest issue is the pine or the wood that is being manipulated which samura narrowly avoids an enemy says he can't react to something with no will will use its undulations so udaha notes that those sonic booms they're using them against mr samura all this noise must be dulling mr samura's echolocation abilities he can detect the enemy through a synthesis of acute attunement to sound and smell and to hostile energy udaha says that if they join the battle they'll make it worse and that their familiar smells will mix with the gunpowder and confuse it so then the kid pops up and he says 
just shut it, you'll get yourselves killed. And one of the monks says that these individuals have special techniques and that they are actually ninjas. So ninjas can actually erase their presence from their smell and their sound, and they can actually be an aid to Samura in battle rather than a hindrance. So he has no risk of friendly fire with the ninjas. I like th I like this application, man. Very creative way to get around Samura's kryptonite. Now, this is actually very bad considering if there is a Hishaku member or somebody that could avoid some more a sense of smell and sound, they could kill him very, very easily. So as good of a swordsman as he is, he has a very big glaring weakness. So he's not invincible. I like that. I like that. Ah! Oh, Kozona. Naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> And we have this cool shot where the monk comments that they don't exist on Mr. Samura's battlefield and the shot is in negative. Very cool, very cool. And we have this cool splash page where it reveals that they are the Kamunabi Ninja Force Elite Samura Bodyguards. And actually, a little bit of an error. Hokazona forgot to draw Samura's right arm when he's unsheathing his sword. Small error, it's not, 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 not the biggest deal. Again, he's on a weekly schedule, so he doesn't have the time to polish every single thing. It's fine. But very cool splash page regardless. Now, as for the identity of this young Young kid that's with these ninjas, I don't know. He might join Chihiro and Hakuri in a semi elusive samurai style, as far as like rap gathering a huge entourage, but I don't I don't necessarily think so. I, I don't think that's the direction we're gonna be going with this. If anything, I feel like the, the two older ones are gonna die. This kid's gonna have to step up, and then Chihiro's gonna have a, a continuous relationship with this guy as far as if he, like, he needs anything moving forward. So as the battle rages on, it's not looking good. The enemy just keeps piling on and piling on and piling on. Here he goes was not lying. All these Hishaku members are just continuously pouring into this temple and we're spread thin. The woman of the Kamenabi group states that there's only one way, but we're too overwhelmed. If we had just one more fighter, we might be able to do something. Udaha and Hakuri run back to the battlefield after they're attempting an escape, but unfortunately they were cut off. And Udaha says that the back exit is blocked too. Udaha grows frustrated and he states that he has to fight too. And we see that as he's cutting down these Hishaku members, he gets close to Samura and we see Hakuri start to fear for his life because he could run the risk of getting his own head cut off. Samura might not know it's him. And then we have a thought from Udaha's head himself. He says, how many times do you think I've watched your technique? We know that they are master and student. So what does he do? Udaha comes in close and rushes past Samura nearly as Samura takes off his ponytail. Beautiful splash hitch here, man. The use of movement. Hokazana! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm all, dude. This animated. I say this every. I say this every video, y'all. I'm sorry, my bad. But this anime is gonna be some gas, bro. Give this to a competent director, please. Oh! I swear to God, dude. If Adult Swim gets their hands on Kagura Bachi. I will actually commit some crimes that have not been seen since World War II. And Udaha says, don't worry, just do your thing. I'll adapt to you. And Samura actually grows frustrated. So I'm hoping we get to see some more backstory between Udaha and Samura. I want to see more of this master-student relationship that they have. I'm actually really, really feeling Udaha as a character, man. I feel like we have a good grasp on who he is. I'm hoping that these two get to use their enchanted blades. I could very easily see it. I mean, the whole point of this is so that they don't and Hishaku can make new contracts and have the place for themselves. But it'd be really, really, really nice, man, if they got intercepted. Maybe Shiba can intercept Hirohiko transporting the blades. I I don't know. I, just, I would hope so, man. These characters are too cool. So the Kamunabi lady ends up drawing a sigil on the floor and actually Hikuri asks what it is. And it is a transport sigil that will teleport both Udaha as well as Hikuri to the front of the temple so they can hopefully make a getaway even if there are some outside the temple. But hopefully it shouldn't be anything that Udaha can't handle himself. She says, if it's true that the Hishaku have invested all their dispensable forces here, then that's good for us. If we can protect the sword bearers while exhausting their Detensky weapons, that'll make a big difference. It'll buy some time for you guys to recover. Even if we sacrifice ourselves, that's our job. Now, here's the thing. What Hakuri says here gives me the impression that they actually aren't going to die. And actually, this act, we're actually going to see more of this group. We see blood begin to drip on the floor. Hakuri locks in and he says, I'm the only one who hasn't risked his life yet with his mask fractured, but still appearing on his face, meaning he's ready to fight or ready to do everything he can at this current point. It's all hands on deck and he knows this. Great moment for Hakuri here, man. Hakuri has never been a coward. He's always been courageous. He's just 
been too weak to do anything. And he knows that he's not the strongest here, but he knows that there's at least something he can do. There's at least something he can do to save the lives of these people fighting desperately to keep these blades out of the hands of the evildoers. Great moment for Hakuri here, man. I'm so glad he's not a, a Zenitsu type character, like a coward or anything like that. He'd be hard to root for. He's goofy, he's soft, but he's still a strong character. He reminds me of Midoriya, honestly. He, genuinely, he does. I'm very curious to see what Hakuri is going to say to Chihiro after his battle with Hirohiko, as well as what other people are going to say to Chihiro after his battle with Hirohiko as well. Because, like, for all intents and purposes, Chihiro put, like, the Spider-Man black suit on, right? You know what I mean? Like, he was, like, he was like scary. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping we get to see some more of their dynamic here soon. But our boy Hakuri here, man, I'm very, very good moment for him. Showing some more of that courageous side from him. I want to see more of Uraha as well as Samoro's relationship. I love both of these characters, but I just, I want some more. Very, 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 that, that's very telling. The fact that we've only known Samara, what, four, five chapters? And people are just constantly wanting to beg for him to live. People are making prayer circles and everything, you know what I mean? Like, dude, this dude's got some gas, man. I'm glazing. My fault. I'm glazing, y'all. My bad. <laughs> I love this manga so much, man. But great chapter here, man. Let me know, who do you guys think that that kid is? And do you guys think that these other members of the Kamenabi Ninja Force are going to die? Do you think they're going to live? What do you think Hakuri's going to do? I'm very curious. Also, what do you guys think that the Hishaku's trump card is? I'm thinking what they're probably going to do is they're probably going to send their strongest members somewhere else maybe to the other sword bearers that we haven't seen yet throw the kamunabi off that's what i would do if i was Uruha. i would send all of the dispensable forces as well as like a lieutenant like the hat guy send them all over there and make give them the impression that oh my god oh shit like this is everything they get they got and then i would send maybe you know the lady kishaku i was in yuda's not there as well maybe the gene guy we don't know but there's definitely something that the the, the hishaku have up their sleeve so uh, for all intents and purposes, Yuta was saying that Hirohiko was dispensable as as far as his plan goes. I mean, he really seemed very comfortable with the fact that Hirohiko might get defeated. He said it'd be good for him. He needs it, so who cares? So I'm, I'm very curious to see what's going on. But yeah, it's me, boy, Daffy, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. Please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Y'all make sure you take care of yourselves, guys, and have a damn good one. Peace.